So today we'll be looking at the peripheral nerve examinations, which will comprise the examinations of the medial nerve, ulnar nerve, and radial nerve. So the patient can come with a complaint of weakness over the hand or loss of a motor function over the hand, which will require you to perform an uh, examination. And at the end of the examination, you'll be able to pinpoint the nerve which is involved and the level of the lesion which is also involved. So prior to that, first position the patient. So what do we do? We have to sit in front of the patient. And since this will be involving the examinations of the hands, forearm and heart, so we will position the patient in a way where we give him a pillow where he can rest his forearm over it. And ideally, ideally you would want to expose the patient umbilicus above. Okay, so uh, this the reaction behind that is to see if there's a wasting of latissimus dorsi muscle because latissimus dorsi muscle is supplied by the nerve roots C6, C7, C8, which is also the common nerve roots for the median nerve, ulnar nerve, and radial nerve. So should you inspect and find any wasting over the latissimus dorsi muscle? then that can give you a clue of the uh, le level of lesion. It can give a picture that there's a spinal involvement which is also causing the peripheral nerve weakness. So prior to examining the medial nerve or radial nerve or ulnar nerve, we have to do a basic screening. So based on the screening as an orthopedic examination demands, look, feel, move and special test. So to even perform this look, feel, move special test on either the median nerve or ulnar nerve or radial nerve, you need to pick the nerve that you want to examine first. So the, you have to perform a screening. So that screening test will give you the probable nerve which is involved for which you would do the look, feel, move special test sequence. So for median nerve, the screening for median nerve, simply ask the patient to perform an OK sign with the hands. to tip so the ok sign can be only done when the flexor digitorum profundus and the um, flexor pollicis longus muscles are functioning these are supplied by the anterior interosseous nerve which is a branch of the median nerve so if the patient is not able to perform a, an ok sign if he makes a, an incomplete ok sign like this then you know that you have the screening is positive for median nerve and you have to perform the look, feel, move special test sequence for median nerve. And the screening for radial nerve will be, so for radial nerve screening, we first ask the patient to see if he can flex and extend the metacarpophalangeal joints. So you would want to immobilize because you want to make sure that he's not moving any other joint. So, okay. And also at the wrist. So flex and extend the wrist joint. Okay. So if a patient is not able to do any of these functions, the patient is not able to do any of these movements, then your the screening is to be taken as positive for radial nerve injury and you start doing the look feel move sequence for radial nerve injury. And what about ulnar nerve? So ulnar nerve for ulnar nerve, see if the patient can abduct and adapt the fingers. Ask the patient to follow what you're doing. Okay. Important thing, do not ask the patient to perform this. Okay. It should be abduction and adduction. Okay. So, and see if the patient can perform an ulnar deviation of the wrist joint. Can perform an ulnar deviation at the wrist. Okay. So, see if you can perform an ulnar deviation at the wrist. So, if the patient is not able to do any, if the patient is not able to do these movements, then uh, this screening will be positive for ulnar nerve injury. So you can start doing the look, feel, moves special test sequence for ulnar nerve. So we will start looking at the look, feel, move special test sequence for median nerve. So we will do this should the patient have uh, an inability to perform an OK sign. Okay. So let us say, let us take a uh, situation, hypothetical situation where the patient is not able to perform an OK sign. Okay. So can you do this? So you can try performing an incomplete OK sign. Okay. So let us say he's not able to perform an incomplete OK sign. Now you go with the look, feel, move, special test sequence. So look, what do you inspect for median nerve? 
So ask the patient to. Yes. So. Okay. So ask the patient to just keep his hands in a normal casket. Okay, normal casket, fully relaxed, normal casket. So in a normal casket uh, finger position, you will notice that there's a flexion, increasing degree of flexion from the index finger up to the little finger. So that is the normal finger casket all of us have. But in median nerve injury, the first two digits, the index and the middle finger, uh, the patient will not be able to flex the index and middle finger. Okay, so there will be loss of flexion over these digits and the thumb. So he will get a pointing finger sign. So this is called a pointing finger sign. Okay. So this will be the pointing finger sign. So just take a normal finger casket and fully extend the index and middle fingers to see how a pointing finger sign can look like. Okay. So the index and middle finger will be pointing. So the patient will be pointing the fingers at me. So it's a pointing finger sign. This is what you see in inspection. Then you look for the tina eminence. So we think of the tina eminence. So the tina eminence will be here. So to inspect this, you raise, ask the patient to raise the hands to the level of my eyes, to the line of sight. And I compare the tina eminence at both limbs. So I look if there's any loss of contour or atrophy of the tina muscles. That will give an indication to median nerve injury. Then I inspect the thumb. So the thumb, in median nerve injury, the thumb will be in an adducted, ADD, adducted and ability to abduct the thumb will give adduction. So this is the deformity that you'll have. So this will be like an ape's hand deformity. So looks if the patient has any ape's hand deformity. So as you can see, we are inspecting in an organized manner. Next, we'll look at the wrist. So inspect for the wrist, look for any possible pathology at the wrist joint which can cause compression to the median nerve. For example, a common cause would be rheumatoid arthritis. So in rheumatoid arthritis, the patient will usually have a radial deviation at the wrist. Okay. And other signs you can look for is uh, any compression like a ganglion cyst or a lipoma or uh, look for any uh, fracture deformity like a dinner fork deformity which you can get in Cody's fracture and inspect for the anterior compartment of the forearm it may be a profit in median nerve injury okay and then look at the elbow look at the elbow joint so elbow joint there are many pathologies which can cause compression or injury to the median nerve for example any supracondylar fracture any lipoma right any pathology at the elbow joint ask the patient to abduct the shoulders and you look for any deformity. At times you can get a cubitus varus, cubitus uh, val valgus deformity. And, and above the elbow, the median nerve doesn't pierce any muscle at the arm level. So there's nothing that you can inspect. So remember, re revise on the cause of the median nerve. So the median nerve can be injured, there's, uh, can be injured at a high level, meaning above the elbow. So that's what we refer to as high level lesion in median nerve. And when it is injured at a level above the wrist, wrist and above, it is low level lesion. So um, it, on inspection, these are the things that you can inspect for because these are the areas in which the median nerve gives its supply. Now look is done, next we go to feel, palpation. So in palpation, you don't have to palpate for warmth or temperature. We palpate for the muscles that we inspected for. So number one, we palpate for the tina eminence. So palpate for the tina muscles. Tina eminence to see if, the, if there is any atrophy. Then we can also palpate for the anterior compartment of the. So that is done with move um, palpation or look feel. Now we go to move. So what do we do in move movement? So we will ask the patient to perform a movement which will involve the median nerve. So we have to know the muscles which are supplied by the median nerve. So we can use a mnemonic LOAF, L-O-A-F. So they stand for lumbricals, opponents policies, abductor policies brevis, and flexor policies brevis. So for lumbricals, how do you test for the function of the lumbricals? So first you ask the patient to perform a, you have to use patient friendly words, right? You can't use words like flexion or extension. For our understanding, yes, we can use those words, but remember to always use a patient friendly words. So ask him to imitate a snake's head. 
So what you basically ask him to do is you ask him to uh, sorry extend the interphalangeal joints and flex the metacarpophalangeal joints. So ask him to perform this. It's like a snake head. So you can even perform and ask the patient to just imitate, and it should be always bilateral. Good. Yes. So the patient will not be able to flex the MCP joint in this instance. Okay. So. And number two, you can ask the patient to just do this and make a fist. Okay. So remember, we saw in inspection, we saw pointing finger sign because the index and middle finger have a, 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 have a deficit in flexion uh, as a motor function. So in benediction, sorry, when in movement, when you want to test for the lumbricals, you can ask when you ask the patient to attempt the fist he will be only able to flex the ring and little finger. So this is what he will give you. This is what the patient will show you. So this is called benediction sign. So on inspection, this is called pointing finger. But when the patient attempts to make a fist, when he shows you this sign, like what you can see here, the patient is showing me and giving me the benediction sign. So this is referred to as the benediction sign. And next, opponent's policies. So to test for opponent's policies, simply ask the patient to perform opposition of the thumb with all the fingers. Okay. So ask the patient to move the thumb towards the fingers. Okay. So can you perform opposition? L O A. A will be abductor policies brevis. So this tests for the abduction of the thumb. So we can perform a test. It is referred to as the pen test. So ask the patient to comfortably place the hands on the pillow and the patient should not lift, elevate the hands off the pillow. So what you do is you just hover a pen over the, uh, the hands and ask the patient to touch the tip of the pen using his thumb. Yes. Okay. So just the thumb. Yes. So this is referred to as the pen test which we test for the Abductor policies brevis. So abductor, which does abduction, policies with reference to the thumb, and brevis, which means a short muscle. F will be flexor policies brevis. So this tests for the flexion of the thumb. Okay. So what you can ask the patient to do is ask the patient to move, flex the thumb, and touch the medial side of the hand. Thank you. So flex here to flex. and touch the medial side of the hand to look for flexion. So this test for the move component, L-O-A-F. Look, feel, move, special test. So in special test, there are some uh, popular special tests that we can do to check for the function of the median nerve. So the first will be the Fallon test. So what do we do in the Fallon test? So we ask the patient to flex the wrist. So from all these examinations, we notice that in median nerve, we generally talk about the thumb, index finger, and middle finger. So when we ask the patient to do the Fallon test to compress the median nerve, he will reproduce the uh, altered sensation and the median nerve distribution of the median nerve, the lateral third half of the digits. So the thumb, index finger, and middle finger will have the altered sensation. Then you do the reverse Fallon test. So reverse Fallon is also referred to as the prayer sign. So you extend the wrist joint. And the same uh, altered sensation will be produced over the distribution of the median nerve within one minute. So you can wait for one minute to elicit the response. Then you have the Durkin's compression test, which is a very sensitive test. So you basically use your thumb to compress the carpal tunnel. So a lot of this is... Uh, a lot of mistake happens here. People tend to compress at the wrist crease when you are performing this test. So this should not be done. This is where the carpal tunnel lies. Okay, It is roofed by the flexor retinaculum. So this is where the carpal tunnel uh, lies. It is distal to the crease of the wrist. So you, comp uh, you uh, apply pressure, compress the carpal tunnel and this is referred as the Durkin's compression test. So within one minute, you should be able to reproduce the altered sensation over the median nerve distribution and always perform it bilaterally. Okay. And next will be Tinnel's sign. So Tinnel's sign is 
when you uh, perform a gentle percussion over the carpal tunnel. So again, do not tap it at the wrist, the crease of the wrist. Not here. This should not be done. This is where the carpal tunnel uh, lies. So this is where you gently tap. You gently percuss. So when you gently percuss, you will notice that the patient will be complaining about an altered sensation at the median nerve distribution. So same thing here. So this is where the carpal tunnel is. Distal to the crease of the wrist. Okay. Then, uh, and finally we would want to, so now with all these tests we will know if, so with these examinations we will know if the median nerve is involved and we also want to know the level of the injury. So the median nerve, there are two levels, high level lesion and low level lesion. So high level lesion refers to the uh, level of lesion above the arm, above the elbow, at the level of the arm. For example, due to a humeral fracture. Okay, and the low level lesion refers to the level above the wrist. So this can include carpal tunnel syndrome or any pathology at the uh, wrist forearm. Okay, pathology at the forearm. So we test for the t sensation over the tina eminence, tina eminence sensation. So if the sensation is intact, it is a low level lesion. In low level lesion, the sensation over the tina eminence will be intact. In high level lesion, the sensation over the tina eminence will be absent. So we, and usually we, and we want to check for sensation in peripheral nerves, we try to use a sharp end. So you can use this orange stick as an example. So you ask the patient to close the eyes and you standardize the reference point. So can you feel this? Now I'm going to touch at various parts of your hand and you have to compare the sensation. Mm -hmm. So, does this feel the same as what you felt at the forehead? Does this feel the same as what you felt over yes. the forehead? Does this feel the same as what you felt over the forehead? Yes. Does this feel the same as what you felt over the forehead? Yes. Does this feel the same as what you felt over the forehead? Yes. So just gently check the sensation of the tina eminence. So in, in, when it's intact, it is a low level lesion. If it is absent, it is a high level lesion. So if you perform this examination at the end of this examination you will be able to know if the median nerve is involved and if it's a high or low level lesion so couple tunnel examination comes under these examples also because it's a common case so couple tunnel will be you'll get a low level lesion and you'll get findings for in, for in look feel move special test you'll get the findings which are positive for median nerve injury